Today, I'm going to be telling you the story of how I accidentally discovered the biggest glitch in Banji Kazooie's history. But first, we have to go back a couple of years, all the way back to 2015. So, it's 2015, and the landscape of speedrunning looks very different. Speedrun.com has just started to take off, and many communities are starting to move their leaderboards over. And one of these communities is the Banji Kazooie community. For people unaware, Banji Kazooie is an amazing platformer, released during the Nintendo 64 era, taking huge inspiration from Super Mario 64. And ever since it released in 1998, people have been finding tricks and glitches in the game. And what you might not know is that Banji Kazooie actually sold more copies than Majora's Mask did, putting it in the top 10 best selling Nintendo 64 games of all time. So when speedrunning started to gain popularity on the internet in 2012 and 13, Banji Kazooie was one of the most popular games out there, making huge appearances at both Twitch and on Games Time Quick events. Now, before we dive deeper into how I discovered a major glitch by simply being bad at the video game, we first need to understand how the speedrun was structured and how the run was structured at the start of 2015. But quickly before we continue with the video, I just want to remind everyone to please check if you're subscribed to today's YouTube channel. I've been publishing tons of videos to this channel, so if you appreciate the content, please remember to subscribe. Thank you so much, on to the video. First, the basics. If you've never played Banjo Kazooie before, the core gameplay mechanics are very easy to understand. The game features nine stages in total, where the main objective is to collect 100 notes and 10 jiggies by exploring the level and completing different tasks. And the notes and jiggies that you collect are used to unlock new areas in Grintilda's lair, the main hub world of the game. The notes, on the other hand, are used for these note doors, granting you access to a whole new area in the lair, while the jiggies are used for puzzle pieces to complete paintings which are hidden around the lair, and once a painting has been completed, it opens up the world, making it accessible to the player. Now, there are 10 jiggies hidden around the Gruntilda's lair, making a total for 100% of the game, 900 notes, and 100 jiggies. Now, I know what you're all are thinking. This sounds an awful lot like Mario 64, where the stars are replaced by jiggies and the coins are replaced with notes. But there are some unique kind of gameplay aspects to Banjo that you need to understand. First is Mumbo Jumbo. Mumbo is a skull-faced shaman, which makes an appearance in the majority of the stages. And by collecting these Mumbo tokens hitting around each stage, you can trade these in for a transformation. These transformations can range from small silly things like Banjo turning into a little ant, where you can go up more steep slopes, to full out now turning into a bee, giving the player the ability to fly around and access areas that you couldn't before. There are limitations with these transformations, however. You can only use these transformations in the stage that you got them, and the surrounding area in the lair. If you try to walk too far away, Mambo will simply turn you back into Banjo. You might be wondering why I'm telling you all of this, but these gameplay mechanics will be very important in understanding some of the glitches in this game. But I still haven't mentioned the biggest feature in Banjo Kazooie, which arguably plays the biggest role in terms of changing core gameplay mechanics, and that is Bottles the Mole. Bottles can be found in most areas in the game, just like Mumbo. But unlike Mumbo, when you find these little molehills, by going up and interacting with it, Bottles will teach Banjo a brand new move, which can be used anywhere in the game. This can range from specific attacks, to talent trot, super jumps, or even starting fly from these red feather platforms. You really could not complete the game without learning the majority of these bottle moves. And for speedrunners, a few of these moves are also essential to get as early as possible because it speeds up a lot of gameplay. For example, Talent Trot, allowing you to run faster, or Beak Bomb, allowing you to dash through the air while flying. But now, with all the kind of core gameplay mechanics explained in a more simple manner, let's dive into the speedrun aspect of this game. Now, as many of you guys might know, I've been working with Manscaped for a while, and you've probably seen this perfect package 4.0. If you haven't already, it comes with a bunch of amazing products and the Lawnmower 4.0, which is an amazing waterproof trimmer. But some things are not great for a trimmer. Believe it or not, I actually do need to shave because I do actually grow a bit of an ugly beard, unfortunately. So that's where a razor is a perfect case scenario for me. And that's why I'm so happy to announce the Plo 2.0, which is a brand new product by Manscaped, and it is this beautiful single edge razor.
Now, the Plow 2.0 is a single blade razor that was designed to reduce painful ingrown hairs and uncomfortable razor burns. It has this amazing weight to it and it feels absolutely amazing to trim. And pro tip, if you wanna have a perfect shave every single time, you can also opt in for the Plow 2.0 blade replacement program as part of the Manscaped Peak Hygiene Plan, which brings you a bunch of new razor blades frequently so you can actually always have a fresh new razor blade. Now, if that doesn't sound amazing, I don't know what does, but if you sign up right now on manscaped.com and use promo code link 7 or use link in the description of this video, you will get 20% off your first order and free shipping. So what are you waiting for? Do it. Now, there are three main categories, 100%, any percent, and any percent no RBA. 100% is the main category for this game. Having a total of 278 submitted runs on speedrun.com as of right in this video. While any percent and any percent no RBA, only having about 30 runs or so respectively. And that is mostly due to the fact that right at the end of the game, there's this note door that is entirely unskippable. And this note door requires 820 notes to open, meaning that even if some jiggies can be skipped, which you definitely do skip in any percent, it's not really possible to skip any of the stages. You have to enter every single stage to collect the required notes. And on top of that as well, many notes requires bottles, moves, or mumbo transformations to access, locking you in even more. So in reality, any percent runs is more like 80% speed runs. So thanks to that, most people play 100%. But there's one unique thing with any percent, and that is a major glitch known as Reverse B Adventure, or RBA for short. Remember earlier when I mentioned you could not enter other areas when Mumbo has transformed you? Well, in a casual perspective, that is true. But with the B in particular, you can actually clip out of bounds right above this note door, skipping the trigger for Mumbo turning you back into Banjo. And this allows for the note collecting being much faster. And not only does this make the note collecting a lot faster due to the movement, but you can also skip a lot of the jiggies thanks to this, because most roofs in this game doesn't have collision, so you can simply just fly out of bounds. But there is one thing that most people don't want to deal with in this category, even if you can skip a lot, and that is simply just the B. If you've ever played this game casually, you will know that the controls for the B are horrible. So even with all of these major discoveries, almost every runner opts for the 100% category. And for the 100% speedrun, the route should be pretty simple, right? Enter each stage, 100% the stage as quickly as possible, and move on to the next one, right? Well, that is the case for every single level, except for two of them. Freeze Easy Peak and Gobi's Valley. You see, in Freeze Easy Peak, you will find bottles, which will teach you an attack known as Beak Bomb which is required to unlock certain jiggies in Gobi's Valley. But that shouldn't be a big issue, right? Just have the player complete Freeze Easy Peak right before Gobi's Valley. Well, that would be the case if it wasn't for the fact that in Gobi's Valley, the player learns Turbo Talon Trot, which is required to complete a race in Freeze Easy Peak. So no matter how much you want to twist this around, one of these stages will require a second trip, making the routing of this game much slower because not only would it add the additional time of traveling across the overworld, but you also have to make the note collecting much slower. Because in Banjo-Kazooie, if the player leaves the stage or dies, all the notes reset. Meaning that if you collected 80 notes, left got a move and came back, you would have zero notes. So you would have to recollect all the 80 notes you already obtained, and then the additional 20 for the 100%. But unfortunately, the only way to solve this would be to find a way to unlock all the moves early. And that is where I come into the picture. Back in 2015, I was practicing Banjo-Kazooie, just learning it for the first time. And just like any other new runner to a video game, I, I was bad. And I was rushing trying to learn how to speedrun the game. And that really came back to bite me in the ass when I reached Furnace Fun. Furnace Fun is one of the final challenges before reaching the final boss in this game, and it features this huge board with multiple squares. And in simple terms, it's a trivia game, with hundreds of questions. There's these zoomed in pictures where you need to know where it was taken, there's music squares where you need to know where the sound effect played in the game, minigame squares where you need to solve a puzzle or beat a boss within a certain time, and then of course just general game questions. And if you answer any of these questions incorrectly, you immediately lose a health and you can retry. 
but there's also these death squares. And if you answer a question incorrectly on these, the game will instantly throw you into the fire, killing Banjo and making you restart the entire quest, losing you a one-up. And for speedrunners, the general strat at the time was to go to one of these Joker squares, where if you answer it correctly, you got two Joker cards. And these can be used to skip any square of your choosing. Now, speedrunners always opted to use these on the minigame squares, because they took the longest time to actually complete. But unfortunately, that does mean that you have to answer every death square first try. And I did not. Due to the fact that I rushed learning the game, I did not know all the trivia questions. So I continued to die to these death squares. And when I was at my final life with no 1-ups left, I decided I was going to use my Joker cards to get past the death squares instead, meaning I had to do a minigame square. And I of course got the hardest minigame square in the game. And in this minigame, you have to face off a boss, and I barely had any life left. So unexpectedly, I failed, died, and got a game over. But unlike other speedrunners who would just go back and continue to practice, I said screw it, and I started my first run straight away, just hoping that I could get past Furnace 5 in my very first real run. But when I got to the first stage, and I talked to Bottles, instead of him teaching me a move, he actually gave me the text box reminding me of how to use that specific move, like he had already learned it. I talked to him a few more times, and I got the same result. And at this time, I was very confused, and I tried using Talent Trod, which is a move that I shouldn't have learned yet. But to my amazement, Kazooie actually came out of the backpack, and I was able to perform the move without ever learning it. I was able to shoot eggs, I was able to fly, I was able to do every single move that I should not have at this point. So somehow, I had started the game on a brand new file with every move active. So I immediately went ahead and I told other speedrunners about this, and people thought I was trolling and I was cheating by using a game chart, but after other speedrunners tried to copy exactly what I did, it worked for them too. So, it was real. Furnace fun moves had just been born. But it wasn't exactly without controversy, because many people felt that this glitch shouldn't be allowed in official speedruns, since it required use of an already existing played on save file. So the glitch kind of could fall into a new game plus category. So the community had to hold a vote, deciding if this should be allowed in speedruns or if it had to fall into a new game plus category. But once the results were in, with a very tight margin, it was decided that this would be allowed in all runs, but a subcategory made called no FFM, allowing people to run the game still without a glitch if they chose to do so. But even with the glitch kind of falling into a gray area in terms of if it should be allowed, people felt that the enjoyment of the run and the route overall greatly outweighed the stigma of, you know, requiring a new game plus glitch. And even to this day, in 2022, with many new routes and glitches found, Furnace Fun Moves still saves about 4 minutes in the 100% category, and even more time at any percent. And I really hope that this can also answer another common question I see from YouTube comment section, which is, how do people even find these glitches? Because there's a question I see come up all the time. And the honest answer is, most of the time, it starts from an accident. Someone accidentally stumbles upon a glitch, and then for further research trying to figure out why that glitch occurred and how it worked, then it can lead to even further glitch discoveries. But most glitches, at least, originate from accidents. So if you ever find a glitch and you're not sure if it's been found or not, don't be afraid to share with the community and see if anyone else has seen it before. But either way, with all that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video going down a little bit of memory lane, because I had a lot of fun writing the script and making this video. And if you like to watch speedrunning videos, watching randomizers, or just general challenge videos, then I definitely recommend you to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching today's video. This is Linka7, signing off.